Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at a workflow to make complex objects in Blender. Before I get into this I should warn that this is a fairly intermediate, maybe even advanced tutorial. It's not advanced in terms of the techniques being used, but the workflow and thought process that I'm going through is a little bit complex. I'm going to do my best to explain that as best as I can, so hopefully it will make sense at whatever level you are, but do bear that in mind as we go through it. So I put up a short recently and it featured this window, which was for a commission, and a few people asked how I went about making this. Now obviously I can't go through the whole thing, it would take just too long, but I thought I'd talk about the basics of how I did this, and then more importantly, probably for a lot of people, talk about the workflow that I used to make this work as a 3D printed model. But this is just a generally good strategy for problem solving. And if I go into this and press Q and ever scroll, so I did use hard dots for this, you can see that this is divided up neatly into sections, as you can see here, and it just makes the whole process much easier to do. So let's get rid of this and talk through just a section so we can understand the process and why this works so well for me. So as with any project like this, I find a really good point of reference is to bring in an image. So Shift and A, and then we want to go down to Image, and then Background. And then find your reference, open it up, and you've got that there. I'm just going to S to scale that up quite a bit. So that's in our background, and importantly, we want to keep that relatively centered. And actually, this isn't perfectly centered on our blue line, which is the z-axis. So I'm going to G and X and move that slightly along. But you will note this is a photograph, so it's not actually perfectly aligned. It's not perfectly straight. And actually, I think the photograph was taken at a bit of an angle. So you're always going to have to bear things like that in mind if this isn't a perfect front-on view. So what we're going to do is talk through this in two stages. Firstly, I'm going to cover the basic ideas of making the shape and cutting things out and creating these relatively ornate shapes that we've got here. And hopefully that will be generally relevant, but I'm also going to be talking about workflow in terms of what I use as my general day-to-day -day workflow when modeling. Now, obviously this varies from project to project in terms of exactly what's involved. And I want to be clear, this isn't me saying this is the most efficient workflow for any one aspect of a project. It's not probably the best way of using non-destructive tools. It's probably not the best workflow in terms of making this as fast as possible. And it's definitely not the best workflow if I already knew what was perfectly going to work and perfectly wouldn't. But when making something as complex as this, you're very likely to run into some sort of issues. And for me, this is the most efficient way that I've found of modeling, but also knowing that I'm going to be able to solve those issues as efficiently as possible as they come up with the final object. Now also do bear in mind that I generally focus on this for 3D printing. Now what we're going to do is make the outer bit of the window, basically the overall shape first, and I am going to be using construction lines for this. Now, I've got a video that goes through this add-on in more detail, and you're more than welcome to have a look at that and see what you think. You could use the curve tools. I'll also put a link in the description of a video that goes through the curve pen, which I find really useful for this. But for me, construction lines is just a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is just go to draw a line here, and I'm going to start a little bit outside my object. Click so it's perfectly on the y-axis, go a little bit wider, then click up to somewhere around here and you'll notice it does snap to those axes and shows it in blue and then I'm going to escape off of that go into x-ray mode so I can see this you can see that vertex there and then I'm going to change to an arc and then I can start on that arc start at this end point probably around there and then just curve that round and if I press control and scroll up I can change the amount of vertices or segments and you can see that in the top left hand corner I'm going to go for 64 just so it's nice and clear and there we've got it now let me just check that's perfectly centered it's not so I'm going to come out of construction lines go into vertex mode and I'm just going to GG that so it's pretty much centered I might just go slightly off oh and I should have shown one last thing if I just come into x-ray mode in fact, actually, let's just sort of go here so we can see it without the picture. If I come into construction lines, tab into edit mode so it's the same for that, and then I go on my line tool, I can just click on that last point, click on the point up here, and it's going to automatically turn that into a plane. Tab out of that, let's go into normal mode, come into front view so we can see that. And now I want to get this mirrored. It's going to make things a lot easier. You can see my origin is in a place that's not really where I want it. So vertex mode, I want it dead center. So I want that. And then I'm just going to shift an S. And I'm going to put my origin to that vert. 
Oh, and this has made a slight mess here. Let's grab those and merge them together. I'm using machine tools for that, where one just merges everything together. I must have been slightly off on my clicking. And let's have a look at the one down there. That one's perfectly fine. So actually, let's put this origin on this vert because we know it's perfectly centered. So Shift and S and origin to vert. And then we can see that there. And then I can just press Alt and X. This is using hard ops again. And then mirror that to the other side. So everything's going to be mirrored nicely to both sides. Come out of x-ray mode. And we can get this going. Now, this is perfectly straight. So I'm just going to go to face mode. And then E and extrude that back a little bit. So we've got some depth to cut these windows out of. So this is going to be our starting point. We're going to start by cutting out, let's just say, one of these windows. We're just going to have a look at this bottom section. As I said, I can't do all of these, but this will give you a really good idea of what I've done. Now, because we mirrored it from this side to this side, we want to be working on this side so that everything works really well when we start booleaning things together. So what we need to do is make this general shape. And again, we're going to use a similar process that we did for the outside one. I'm just going to go into construction lines and I'm going to select a draw line. Now we're going to have a bit of a problem here because this isn't perfectly straight and you'll see this in a second. So let's just start here, click, and we're going to draw straight down and you can see how slightly off this is. I'll click down to there and then come across and then stop drawing there. And we'll do exactly the same thing where we want to have our arc. So draw arc there, click there, and then stretch it out, control, and then let's up that to let's say 16, maybe 32 actually, and then click, and we've got that. Then I want to get out of construction lines, so I'm just gonna click there. And in theory, I want to move my origin to this vertex. Now, actually, this is gonna cause a bit of a problem here, and you'll notice we did it differently for the other object. I'll explain that in a second, but if I press Alt and X now to mirror it, it's got a slight angle to it. You'll notice it's not perfectly straight, and that's because the vertex has a different orientation to it. So actually, what I'm going to do is come into vertex mode. I'm going to select that vertex there, shift select that vertex, and then using machine tools, Alt A and align to the right, and now that will be aligned. What that means is that I can now select this vertex, shift and S, move that origin to my vert, and then keeping in edit mode, I'm going to Alt and X, and now I can use the symmetrize function, which is part of machine tools, and do that to the side. And this is going to create a object which is now not being mirrored on this side. And that's just something I found is best because I don't like booleaning, which is going to be what I'm doing for this inner object over the top of this sort of line that goes down the middle. So now that we've got that, one thing I like to check is if I press G, note these aren't two vertices on top of each other, which is important. And you might want to check the one that's down here as well. So G, no issue there. So what we can do is press A and then F and we've filled that. Now, if we just come out of X-ray mode, you can see we've got this slight distortion here. I'm not sure how well that will come out on YouTube, but that's because these faces, the face of this object and the front face of this object, are on exactly the same location. So what we want to do is just stop that. Now, Blender probably won't have an issue with this if we use an exact method of booleaning, but I'd probably avoid it. So what I'm going to do is press N, come to the Y axis, and then minus 0.5, and then that now is sticking out in front of it, and we don't have an issue. And then we want to give this some thickness. And because I know this is half a millimeter, and I want this going a millimeter in, I appreciate this doesn't have units, it's Blender units at this point, but I use Blender units as a millimeter. I can come to Add Modifier and then Solidify, and I want this to have a thickness of 1.5 because, well, that's the half plus the one, and then I change to Offset 1 so that it goes the other direction where it was as a minus. And then we've got that ready to go. Now, before we start booleaning, let's do a quick couple of checks. And the first is that I want to check my face orientation. And we can see straight away, this one, our main object, is oriented in the wrong direction. I've got mine set up so that the wrong direction turns up yellow. Yours will probably turn up red, and this one will turn blue. I have that set off so that basically I just see the normal faces as they would be, and the ones that are wrong in yellow. It's easy to fix. Go into vertex mode, A, Shift and N. And we've now got that sorted, so our booleans won't cause any issues. And then, let's turn that off for now. Select the object that we want to cut out. Shift select the object we want to cut. And then, with ball tools enabled, you go to edit, 
preferences and then add-ons and type in ball. If you don't have this, activate that. And then once again, object, shift select the object we want to cut out of and then control and minus on your number pad. And we're gonna do a difference. Mine's starting as an exact Boolean already. If yours says fast, change it to exact. It's a little bit slower, but it shouldn't make a difference at this level of detail and it's less likely to go wrong. So there we go. Now that's the basics of making the shapes. I'm just gonna go through and make the shapes for the next bit inside. And again, I'm gonna use box cutter. You could use the curve tool if you wanted to. Now I'm just gonna speed that up as I go through this. And it's just the same set of tools using the line and the arc. And you'll notice the arc has a really nice feature where this control and scrolling allows me to set any ones where it's like half an arc as being 16 vertices or 16 segments. And then when I've got one that's a whole arc, I can set that as 32, so double the number. And that keeps everything relatively uniform in terms of the space between each of my vertices. Now that hasn't looked exactly right. In fact, it does look right. It's just this image again, not being perfectly flat. So we've got that there. Now at this point, we can start fiddling around with this. Uh, we do need to press A and then F to fill it. And then we've got that there and we need to add this detail in. Now, there's two ways of thinking about this and this is where the workflow becomes important. So what I'm gonna do is add my solidify modifier, put that to 1.5 and then to one. And importantly notice, I've kept this on the same level. It's not gonna make a difference for the way that we're gonna do this because this has already been cut out. So notice that face is on this level as the front face of this, but it's not a problem because we've already cut out from it. And now this is going half a millimeter further in. Now, let's go through this two lines of thoughts of how to think through this. Quickly check face orientation first and everything's fine. And let's shift and D and I'll bring that along the X axis so I can explain this workflow methodology that makes everything easier to find when you've got this really complex set of objects. So two ways of thinking. First, select the object, select the object I want to cut it from, control and minus, and we've got that working great. H to hide that and H to hide that. Other way of thinking, I select the object and instead of cutting it from this object, what I'm gonna do is add it to my cutter. So select the object, select the cutter, and this time control and plus. Notice we've added this to this cutter. Now, this has given us exactly the same result, except for there's an important difference. If I want to find where any individual cutter is that's causing a problem, if I select here, press Q, ever scroll, I've got that cutter and then that cutter. So I have to scroll through everything. Now, that's not a problem when there's only two cutters, but when you're considering there's gonna be a third level of detail here, and then if we have a look at our image, we're gonna have every single one of these windows Finding any one piece is gonna take forever of scrolling. Whereas on this one, if I press Q and ever scroll, I've only got one. And then if I click that, I press Q and ever scroll, it now has the one that's attached to that main outer window. Now, if we just come back to the completed model again, and I just show this from what I was showing at the beginning, you can see what I mean here. Everything is in a complete section, which makes it easier to find. And then we just queue again, ever scroll, and then I can find the individual elements within that. So let's say, for example, this bit of the window here. And then if I come into this and then queue and ever scroll, we can get the bit behind it. It just makes everything way easier to find. And for me, that's a really important part of the workflow. Whereas on this methodology, I would be scrolling through somewhere in the region of, well, 20 odd windows, and they'd each have three layers of them. So I'd have 60 things to scroll through. Also with that level of booleaning, I often find that that's where the problems happen. So that's quite a nice way of not having to deal with that. Now there's another benefit of this as well, which is worth discussing if we just H to hide that. And that is that if I ever scroll and find that, when I want to add these additional windows in here, because this is all part of one, if I come to the modifier panel and then add in our array, so here we can have all of this being done in one go. And then we can add that count to there. Is that, yeah, that's pretty good. Whereas with this one and this method, I'd have to queue, ever scroll, do it for this one, and then come back in, Q, ever scroll, find the thing, and then 
exactly the same thing again, add modifier array, and then get that on the axis there. And then I've got to fiddle about with exactly where it is. Obviously that would be easier with constant offset, but this whole method on this one is just more tedious and it causes problems in the long run. So honestly, I really would suggest you don't do that. You do this. Now the other benefit, this, if I just quickly make this other inside section, obviously this is speeded up, but it's the same tools again, is that we can just add this to one of them and then it adds it to all the others. Again, making this really nice, quick and easy sort of workflow to go with. Now the final thing that I want to mention with this, and I'm not sure I'm gonna have a problem with this, but the most important reason why I do this workflow, like I said, pretty fast, but maybe not the most efficient of all workflows, is that it makes it very easy to solve problems with your mesh. So just something to do with this. If you've got hard ops, if you bring up your Q menu, you'll notice I've got my smart apply as one of my favorites. All you do is go into where that is. So smart apply there, right click, and then click to, here will be add to quick favorites if I remove it and then bring it back on so there you go add to quick favorites make sure that's at the top what that allows you to do is come here and I can just press QQ and then enter because it will automatically come to the smart apply and then that's going to apply everything now in this instance this probably isn't going to cause many issues if I come to the 3d print toolbox and check all let's have a look and no it hasn't created any issues and that's one of the benefits of this workflow it creates a lot less issues but if I come back here, what's really beneficial about this is if it did create any issues, what I can do is, well, quickly come to this object and instead of just applying it to this, what I can do is come here, QQ, smart apply so that this becomes a solid object, then come to here and QQ and smart apply. And what that does is because you're making the Booleans happen bit by bit, you're less likely to have issues. And if you really need to, if I just undo all of that, you could come into this, Q, and then ever scroll, come into here, and then you could apply this, then apply the next one up, then apply the final one. So when you do your final object, basically it makes it really easy to go, oh, well, there's my issue, it's in this section, and then look at the Booleans in that section and fix them. So it's a really nice process to be able to go through and fix things bit by bit. Now, one of the classic things with this that is going to cause a problem here is where this tries to do its joining lines. If I come into vertex mode, you can see here it's got one here and one to that corner there, which actually is pretty good. The other option that you can do is come into this. And for example, you might want to go into edge mode, press K, click, come across. I normally press X so it sticks on that axis. C so it goes all the way through, click, and then hit enter. And now if you go into x-ray mode, you'll notice this isn't creating these cuts that were there and there. You've controlled where they are and they're coming through the middle. And again, if you QQ and smart apply, that has a tendency to create less issues because you've got everything going across there. So I appreciate I haven't shown the whole process of making this full window, but hopefully that gives you a really nice idea about the workflow and how to space these out bit by bit and divide everything up into sections in a way that's gonna make this easier for you to create these really complex shapes. And if there is an issue, be able to find those issues and fix them. If you do have any questions about anything I've covered or you'd like to see a video looking at this maybe on a smaller project that's not gonna take hours to go through, do feel free to ask. I'd happily look at something else. And as always, if you found that helpful, please do hit that like button. And if you wanna see any more things like this or catch up on videos without adverts and get some videos ahead of time, head on over to the Patreon where any support for the channel is massively appreciated. Have a great day, guys.